What's up riders, old man Ronan here and welcome back to the channel. Yeah, we've got a, a special treat today as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to give you the top five reasons I love the Royal Enfield Classics. Yes, both the 500 and the 350. It should be a fantastic video guys, so stay tuned. You know, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, why are you including both? Well, there's a pretty good reason for that. And the main is they're really, really similar in a lot of ways. There are some differences and they are drastic, but those differences really make the motorcycles, uh, well, not only stand out, but also give you a feel for what they really are about. And let's go over a few of the things I love about this bike or these bikes. Man, I'll tell you what, the rideability of these bikes are phenomenal. Uh, I, I, gotta, I gotta admit, uh, you know, when I went down to, uh, when I went down to Savannah for the North American reveal of the Classic 350, you know, I really didn't know what to think. I had ridden the Bullet back in the early 2000s, which you guys are frequent watchers of the channel, you know that already. But I really enjoyed what it was, you know, there was some vibration and stuff like that, and there is vibration on my Classic 500. It's not that bad. I know a lot of guys freak out, they go, oh, it's Dude, if you're used to riding Harley-Davidson's and Triumph, the older ones that I am, man, it's nothing. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's absolutely nothing. So, first thing is, is on a Classic 500, you need to get that completely out of your head. But as far as the Classic 350, that J-Series engine, which I have in my Meteor, is just a... Uh, uh, it, it, well, I admit this, I'll tell you this before, it is my absolute favorite single cylinder that uh, I've ever ridden. It is phenomenal. The thing is... Uh, butter smooth that the way that they've got it counterbalanced the performance they get out of a 350 uh, engine is phenomenal uh, to be honest with you between these two motorcycles I get a little more top end out of this on the classic 500 but I mean it's nominal I mean it's not that much as far as the acceleration I get just a tad little bit quicker out of the 500 but again it's nominal it's not that much more they really did a fantastic job on the 350 and that J series engine I, I, I'm hyper impressed with it and I think it should be a, a platform that they can either upgrade or, or, or make bigger engines or whatever they want to do down the road I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be an engine that they can use for years upon years because it is phenomenal Now, as far as the rideability, the, uh, the sitting style on the classic, both 350 and 500, is more of an upright uh, British standard style or, you know, UK standard style, whatever you want to call it. I, you know, I always call it the British or the English standard style. You sit up on them. Uh, the handlebars, they give you a good little bit of... Uh, good little bit of stretch not much the the seats on them are very very comfortable I would say probably the 500 seat with the spring is maybe just a little tad more comfortable because it's got that little extra forgiveness when you're bouncing around now I did have the uh, touring seat on the classic 350 when I was down in Savannah and it was hyper comfortable the uh, one I rode through uh, uh, some of the other videos was the standard seat and it was good uh, not as good as this. The touring seat on the Classic 350, yeah, it's better than this. But as far as uh, the standard seats, yeah, I, uh, I would say that the, uh, the Classic 500 has a little bit better seat simply because of the spring loadedness. It gives you a little bit more, a little bit more bounce, if you will, and it, it also adds to the suspension, which the rideability of these motorcycles, pretty much anywhere you want to take them, is just phenomenal. Which is the reason why it's one of the things I love about the bike. The, the rideability of these bikes, not only on short distance or long distances, is fantastic. I mean, this bike is a blast. I, uh, it, it's, you know, I've got, what, three that I own as far as the Royal Enfields. I've got the Meteor 350, I've got the Classic 500 here, and of course I've got the uh, Himalayan, which, you know, is, I, I love them all. I, I, uh, I really get a kick out of riding this bike. I really do. I love them all. all I never sell any of them. But this bike, it's, it's just... It's just something different about the rideability. The, the rider triangle is, is, is really, it's comfortable. Now, on a really long distance ride, I probably would prefer the Meteor 350 over either the Classic 350 or the 500, to be perfectly honest with you. But as far as something just to put around on or go on short day trips, uh, this, this bike 
these bikes, I should say, are phenomenal. That rideability, the the the, the way that you sit up, and you, the way that you can just uh, enjoy the ride. I guess that's the best way. This bike here gives you the ability to enjoy the ride. It is fun, man. I mean, it is a super super fun motorcycle. Huh, it's beautiful out here today. You know, we don't have too many more of these days. We're in mid uh, November already. We've got a warm spell. It's supposed to be a high of 62 today. Wow! Of course, they're saying uh, next week, not so much. <laughs> Probably get our first snow of the year next week. I know, right? But man, the grass is a little green in November. I know we don't have any leaves left, but the grass is green and just the, the hill country here is beautiful and the back roads are beautiful and the rideability of the classics, man, makes it perfect. Now, guys are asking me in the rideability part, if I want to take this on long distance ride, I get a lot of comments. In fact, comment below. Anytime you guys want to ask me a question, make a comment below and I'll get to you. Or you can send me an email. And my email address is oldmanronin at gmail.com. Either way, uh, ask me a question. We'll answer them either on the uh, comment or what we'll do is we'll send you an email back. Between the parts and the fuel economy of the uh, of the classics, man, uh, it, it's phenomenal. I know on my on the three on my Meteor 350, which is exactly the same engine which is in the uh, classic 350, I'm getting upwards to 90 miles a gallon, and uh, you know for me that's kind of hard to stay out of it, but uh, I do do that, and it's just a fantastic motorcycle for me to ride around and, and actually do ultralight touring on. I really do enjoy that motorcycle for just that reason. Uh, the classic uh, 500. Uh, I'm getting right around 75 to 80 miles a gallon, but again, the motorcycle doesn't have that many miles on yet. It's not even broke in, so I'm sure it's going to open up the more I ride it. Uh, you know, this bike, when I got it, only had 289-odd miles on it, and uh, we, we're still under 500 right now as we go. So she's still in the break-in period, so we've got a little bit of time in here before we can uh, to really open her up as wide as I want to do. I have had it as fast as uh, uh, almost 80 miles an hour just for a short period of time just to see what she would do and it, it just runs phenomenal uh, you know and again the classic uh, 350 is going to do that 70 72 miles an hour maybe a tad more uh, because it is electronically limited but you're seeing there's not that much difference in speed so when guys are saying well I'd really like to have a classic 500 but I can't really I can't really uh, find any because there's none around well dude buy a classic 350 it's literally the same motorcycle when it comes down to the rideability and of course the cost effectiveness because these things hold their value, which is amazing to me. It, they hold, I mean, they're not that much to begin with, but go look online on, the, uh, you know, I encourage you to, any of the Royal Enfield models right now, either in some of the Facebook marketplaces or Craigslist if you're here in the U.S. or wherever, or, you know, whatever your search engine is for selling motorcycles uh, in your part of the world. Man, they hold their value. They simply hold their value. Probably percentage-wise better than Harley-Davidson. I mean, you can find some old Sportsters for next to nothing. Uh, these you cannot. You, you're lucky to find a really good deal. And uh, I did, <laughs> which is why I have it. So as far as the cost effectiveness between uh, having uh, inexpensive parts, uh, you know, I, I go on and on. Uh, you guys are a frequent watcher of the channel about how cheap the, uh, you know, oil filters are and, and how uh, cheap you know, parts are for the motorcycle. And there's a tremendous amount of, of uh, uh, aftermarket support. Now you have to do look for it. Uh, Hitchcock's out of the UK has a tremendous amount of aftermarket supports, particularly on the, the 500 here. It's been around, what, forever, which we're going to get to in a little bit uh, later in the video. But um, I'm telling you, uh, as far as having uh, uh, ease of uh, access of parts and cost effectiveness, and now I don't know about dealer uh, I don't know about dealer pricing on service. That's something that you have to, you know, talk and negotiate with your own dealer in your area. But uh, I'm sure it's similar to where everybody else is. Uh, not just Royal Enfield. I mean, if you ever took a motorcycle to a Harley dealership, <laughs> Lord have mercy. You better have another loan for your motorcycle maintenance. Uh, that's why I do this stuff myself, personally. But again, that's uh, not everybody can do that, and I appreciate that. And so that's why I want to tell people to make sure that you do be aware that uh, cost effectiveness from 90% of the things is going to be very, very inexpensive. Man, it's beautiful out today. Like I said, I think the uh, temperature is supposed to go up to almost 62, 63 degrees. And again, I'll put the Celsius in the corner there, but wow. We're up on top of the ridges, and we're looking around and having a good time. There's no doubt about it.
I gotta tell you guys, it's the looks. <laughs> I mean, these things, well, I'll put it to you this way. Uh, they've been making them since 1948, uh, this style, the bullet, and, uh, in, you know, and of course they added the classics in the early part of the 2000s, but as far as these bikes, they haven't really changed much as far as the, the looks wise since the uh, uh, you know 40s, 50s, and 60s, and 70s, and 80s, and 90s. They really haven't. And that really is attractive to me. You know, you, you want to have the, you know, the term old school? Well, that's not old school. This is original classic. These motorcycles basically have been made for what, o almost 80 years, over 70 years, and they haven't really changed that much. I mean, they have some, you know, uh, technological changes with the EFI and things like that, and of course the J-Series engine for the uh, 350, but in reality, they really haven't changed the looks of them, and that, that looks factor, man, I'll tell you what, anywhere I go that I pull off and there's people around, I get people come up and they want to take pictures of the bike. They, want, they don't want to take pictures of me which is probably good I'd break cameras but the reality of it is they want to take pictures of the motorcycle because you get guesses man that's a I have not seen a bike that long you know especially the older guys they said man I haven't seen a bike like that since the 50s I said well they this is a new bike <laughs> when I was down at uh, when I was down at the uh, the uh, reveal for uh, uh, the classic 350 in Savannah we stopped off at a coffee shop uh, down in Savannah we had some time on our own so we took a couple we jumped on a couple classic uh, 350s and uh, a couple people and I went down to uh, this coffee shop and we parked them out front and it was down in the old part of Savannah and I'll tell you what we had a crowd of folks come around us saying how much they loved the way the motorcycle looked and what year was it and we were saying it was brand new and you could buy one for under five grand and a three-year warranty and they freaked out they said I cannot believe it and I, I tell you what I think that's one of the reasons why Royal Enfield is getting such a, a hard look by motorcycle buyers all over the all over the world but in particularly in the United States because they're not used to seeing anything like this the looks of these motorcycles the, the, the fit and finish the way that they're built particularly now it's just phenomenal and uh, the, the fact that they're that that cost effective if you will I mean I like I said I mentioned every time I go to a place I get a crowd of people come around and ask questions about it and that is a huge aspect for me not that I'm an attention hound you're an idiot <laughs> but the reality of it is it's it just makes me feel good because this is what I love to look at I love the look of this style of motorcycle I like something that looks rugged and rough and industrial and old school and Royal Enfield's looks on the entire and through the entire model line is that way I mean the the Continental GT the Interceptor the new Super Meteor now even the Meteor 350 and of course the Himalayan and now the classic 350 all have that look and of course you know classic 500 I would say more than anything else is the way they make me feel. Uh, I, uh, I simply love how I feel as I'm riding. I love how I feel when I stop and look at the bike when I, you know, the old adage is if you don't look at your bike when you walk away from it, you really don't like your bike. And, uh, you know, if you're one of these guys that never washes your bike, you, you know, you kind of abuse it and, and wait to the last minute to do maintenance on it and things like that, then you really don't like your bike. You, it's a tool for you. These are more than a tool. These are, these are kind of way of life. And I think that's a huge factor for me. It just really makes me feel like I'm part of uh, the world of Royal Enfield when I ride this I get a smile on my face all the time like I mentioned in lots of my videos miles of smiles and I haven't said that for a while but I want to bring that back but there's just miles of smiles on the classics whether it's the 350 or whether it's the 500 it feels exactly the same to me uh, I really do love the way that this battle green looks uh, the last model the special edition they made I, I really wanted to uh, but they I couldn't I, I had I found one but the guy sold it for I got to him and it was that uh, stealth black I really love the way that bike looked uh, that's one that I wish wish I had uh, not over this but as an addition to because it was beautiful in my opinion I love that stealth black look on that uh, on the last year that I think the last couple years that they made it that 2020s they were just gorgeous and uh, of course you know I think black is beautiful anyways on motorcycles the most important thing to me on a motorcycle is how it makes me feel and I think that's one of the top reasons why I love Royal Enfield classics is because they do they make me feel 
I don't know, something fuzzy inside, man. <laughs> uh, they just, they really do make me feel like I'm accomplishing something every time I ride the bike. You know, it's, they're fun, they're exciting. Uh, you, you know, it's like the box of chocolates, you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, you, you know, the reaction you get from people, uh, you know, the way that they look and the way that you look back at them when you walk away from them, all those boil down to a key factor of pleasure. And is that the reason why we ride anyways, to get pleasure? I mean, what can I say? And I guess the top thing that I think the reason why I love the classics is this. The culture, yeah. I mean, the culture of this motorcycle goes back so far. Uh, like I mentioned earlier about being a true classic, uh, this motorcycle is basically, whether it's the Bullet 500 or the Classic 500, its basic shape, style, engine goes way back to 1948. And they've been building a version of this, similar to this, different paint schemes and things of that nature, since 1948. There's been some upgrades, like I mentioned earlier, in the, uh, as far as in technology, like this is an EFI. Uh, most, you know, the older ones are obviously carbureted. Uh, there was a couple uh, that had some different uh, engines in them. And, you know, they've, they've been, but the basic shape and the basic look and the basic culture of the motorcycle has been there. And if you, if you watch videos from India, they love their motorcycle. They love their Royal Enfields and the reason they do is because it is you know I said it before and I hate to use the term but they're literally the uh, the Indian and the European uh, or the Southeast Asian Harley Davidson uh, because they have the the quirkiness that they have but also the fact that there's a culture there that people just simply adore in the motorcycle because well it's a Royal Enfield but you know there's a lot of there's a lot of different things that you can say about the culture you know I, I don't know if uh, you know other motorcycle brands have the kind of culture that you know I'd say either Royal Enfield Moto Guzzi and or Harley Davidson has you just don't you just don't hear about it you hear about guys loving all over Harley Davidson you hear about guys loving all over Royal Enfield you hear about guys loving all over Moto Guzzi you know I always say how many times you've ever seen somebody line up to get a, a Honda tattoo <laughs> you just don't see it because there's the, the, it just doesn't have the culture. I know a guy here in Ohio that's got himself a, uh, a Royal Enfield tattoo, and I think that's just fantastic. He loves the motorcycle that much and the brand that much that he went out and put a tattoo on his arm. And I know quite a few other people that are doing it worldwide as well too, which is fantastic. I know a lot of guys have Harley tattoos. You don't see that in any other motorcycle brand if you ask me or if you do it's very seldom they'll wear a t-shirt or they'll wear a hat because they spent three to four times the amount of money on the bike and they thought well you know I'll, I'll buy a hat too <laughs> but for Royal Enfield the culture's there I mean I'm, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty blessed well get out of the way there I'm pretty blessed that I was uh, made a uh, Royal Enfield brand ambassador because uh, it's something that fits me. Even though that I've been riding Harley Davidson so much longer, this brand probably has had more impact on my life as a, as a rider than any other motorcycle I've ever ridden in my life. And I know that sounds a little weird to some folks, but it truly has. It's brought the joy of motorcycling back to me, which, you know, before I just ride because I was riding. I mean, I love my Harleys, don't get me wrong. But it, it, I, I didn't have the kind of fun. I, I didn't have the kind of fun I'm having on these. I guess that's what I'm saying. And and that is the big, big difference. And I attribute that to the culture of the bike. I attribute that to all the top five that I just mentioned before. The uh, ease of maintenance. The uh, the way that the bike makes me feel, the uh, cost of effectiveness of it, and, and the way it looks. All these reasons come to a point where I simply love the Classic 500 and the Classic 350. And I encourage each and every one of you, if you've not gotten a chance to get out and ride one, go Classic, baby. Start something old is what the Throttle Company says, and that's really the idea that I like to take too, because this thing is a true original classic. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification button, share and comment, because you know I read all the comments and comment on as many as I possibly can. Until next time guys, ride safe, and above all, keep her on two wheels, baby.